Vibrations in audio equipment do generate sound quality, as we have seen in a number of reviews I did recently. In this video a 30 euro solution for sources and amps. From reactions I gathered that not too many viewers understand the influence of vibrations on audio quality. Let me explain why vibrations in audio equipment do deteriorate the sound quality. Conductors of all sorts can vary their electrical properties when under mechanical stress. Some materials more than others. Perhaps the best known are piezoelectric elements that produce usable voltages when mechanical force is applied. Many cigarette lighters use this to light the gas. Piezoelectricity can occur in crystals, some ceramics and even in biological matters like bone, DNA and proteins. Of course these are not suited for audio applications, but quartz crystals are. They are used as piezoelectric oscillators. When a voltage is applied to a quartz crystal it slightly changes in shape and when the voltage is removed again it changes back in shape. This phenomenon is used as escapement in quartz oscillators and are used in audio equipment as clock oscillators. So you might think of a quartz oscillator as an electronic component while it has clear mechanical properties that makes it to a precision clock oscillator. It might be clear that external mechanical force can influence the precision ever so slightly. But in audio ever so slightly can be important. Very important. Although the quartz oscillator is the most obvious example that is sensitive to mechanical force, other components in CD players, streamers, DACs and amplifiers are too. Take for instance electrolytic capacitors that are sheets of conducting material rolled up with an isolating layer in between. The capacitor holds a given charge between the two conductors depending on the distance between the conductors caused by the insulating layer, called dielectric. The materials the conductors are made of have influence on its behavior in audio equipment, other than to be expected from the electrical specifications printed on the outside. But even the materials the dielectric layer is made from has hardly to non measurable influence but there is an impact on the sound quality. And depending on the construction, capacitors will be sensitive to mechanical force, as resonances in furniture the equipment is placed on. This phenomenon is called microphony. Even the resistors can be microphonic too. Manufacturers like Moondorf even have low microphony resistors in their catalogue. And of course mechanical parts will be sensitive to vibrations too. Not only your record player and CD player, but also potentiometers used for volume and balance control and even switches too. So fighting vibrations will pay off for any decent stereo setup. Last month I bought a rack for my setup 1 to replace the TV cabinet I got from a furniture shop centuries ago. To be able to at least place my setup 1A or B and the surround setup in the rack and to get the green light from the aesthetics committee, I chose a basic design by the German manufacturer Creative, the Trent 3-3, with sandfield tubes on casters. Taking into account the size, at about 1000 euros MSRP including VAT, it wasn't the most expensive rack in the program. I realized it will not fight vibrations as well as the more expensive model. But nevertheless I was impressed by the sound improvement it gave. Better, deeper lows with more texture, slightly more open mids and cleaner highs. That inspired me to try some DIY vibration killers as suggested by you, the viewer. I started off with bamboo cutting boards for that was frequently mentioned. I placed one under the Grim Audio Mu1 player. That gave no further improvements, so I tried the same board under the Core Dave DAC. Again, no obvious improvements. Then the board under both the Mu1 and the Dave. Not impressed. The second cheap suggestion was the use of Arto Moon Gel, 
jelly-like cushions that are used by drummers to dampen drum heads, cymbals and the like. So I ordered two sets, each containing six gel cushions. Although viewer David Hardacre used them between his monitor loudspeakers and the stands, I wouldn't place them under my 26 kilos weighting floor standing speakers. But under the Dave and the Mu1 that was an option. Unfortunately the pads were not tall enough to eliminate the Dave's own feet and using them under the feet of the Mu1 wasn't easy too. To make things easier I placed six moon gel cushions under a cutting board, one on each corner and two in the middle so that when the board itself would vibrate it would be dampened too. But first let me tell you the equipment I used for this test. I started off with setup 1A where the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier drives the Audiophysics Scorpio loudspeakers over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The digital source is the Grim Audio Mu1 music player that is a Rune server, Rune endpoint, reclocker and scaler in one. It is connected to the Core Dave DAC over Siltec AES EBU cable. The analog connection between the Dave and the amp is over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. The network acoustic Nuon streaming system that comprises of the Nuon Ethernet filter and the Nuon streaming Ethernet cable is connected between the Grim Audio Mu1 and the SOTM SNH10G audiophile network switch. The equipment is placed in the Creative Trend 3-3 Hi-Fi rack. With the cutting board with the moon gel placed under the Mu1 player, there was a clear improvement in the lows. They opened up further, went deeper, had more texture. The low mids where male voices might cause coloration sounded cleaner while the mids opened up more. The special information was richer, offering a very natural stereo image. There was an invitation to place the second cutting board with moon gel under the Dave DAC. That gave a slight further improvement, but not too much. So I removed the board and the moon gel from under the Mu1 which gave a slight reduction in sound quality. It was obvious that placing both the DAC and the player on a board with moon gel gave the best result but placing one of them on a board with moon gel was already 80% of the work. This might clearly depend on the gear. The Mu1 has an extremely well specced and dampened crystal oscillator while the Dave has a very rigid machined aluminium cabinet and thus a relatively high mass that will dampen a lot of vibrations already. So let's see what it does to a less expensive DAC. So the core Dave DAC was replaced by the MyTech Brooklyn MQA enabled DAC powered by the Ferron Hipsus power supply. The same cabling is used to the Grim Audio Mu1 over Siltec AES EBU cable and to the amp over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. Although the overall sound quality is of course lower than that of the Dave, placing the Brooklyn on the board with moon gel gave an improvement along the same lines as with the Dave. And even placing the Ferron Hipsus power supply on top of the Brooklyn gave a slight improvement. Bamboo cutting boards are supposed to have less resonances than other wood boards. I have not researched that. The boards I use are 380 by 300 mm and 16 mm thick with a plastic trim along the rims and bottom. They were picked for their measures so it would nicely fit the Mu1 and the Dave. I got them from a shop in kitchen gear. The price was 15 euros each including VAT. The Arto Moon Gel came in a set of six in a kind of pillbox at 7 euro 85 per set including VAT. They were bought at a musical instrument shop. Since they are US products they must be available worldwide. I also saw them on Amazon. Let me show you first what the damping is. You can see that it absorbs vibrations quite well. And you might want to know 
how these DIY gel boards compare to the commercial products I reviewed earlier. I don't dare to say simply because the old TV cabinet was replaced by the Creative Rack, but why wouldn't you start with the gel board first? For I'm sure performance will vary with the equipment used. And if the results are positive, you can either use the same boards for other components in your stereo, for money won't stop you, and you could then ask your dealer or supplier to let you try the commercial solutions at home and so compare them to what you already have. And please share your experiences in the comments below this video on YouTube. I will later on this year also do a test with lower end equipment, but my guess is now that also my setup too will improve using this solution. I already ordered other damping materials like the looted 10 pieces of gel from Amazon, but these are not jelly enough to dampen the vibrations under the cutting board. Which brings us to the end of this video. As usual there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video in YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.